the Apple M5 iPad Pro versus the Samsung Galaxy Tab S11 Ultra. Dramatic pause. Is Samsung in trouble now? This is the first of a series of comparison videos between the powerful M5 iPad Pro and the gorgeous Samsung Galaxy Tab S11 Ultra. And today we'll be focusing primarily on productivity work, showcasing my favorite Samsung feature of all time, Samsung DeX and Apple's new take on Stage Manager and Windowed Apps. I'm Alex, and I do down-to-earth tech videos. Here's a reminder of what each of these bad boys pack in terms of specs. You won't hear this a lot on YouTube, but let me break this to you. Unfortunately, specs on this tablet won't be that important for most people, as you're gonna find out later, but it could be important for some of you if you get really busy working on it. My M5 iPad Pro, the one I purchased myself, is the cheapest M5 iPad Pro that you can get. Still expensive, but it's the one I went for. No nano texture display, no extra storage, and no extra RAM or extra CPU either. I explained why I chose this in my previous videos here, somewhere here, but today is not about that. What I'm gonna try and show you here today is what these devices can do side by side when you're actually trying to get work done. Here's some of the specs side by side so you can take a look. This is not all the specs, but just the ones that you care about really. So the iPad I'm using here, as you can see, is the 256 gig model, and the Tab S11 Ultra I have is the 512 gig model. Both of these tablets go higher if you pay more, of course, but on storage, the Tab S11 Ultra can take a micro SD card, which is a neat way to save on local storage, and it's a nice touch from Samsung, and I hope they don't remove that soon. It's nice that they kept that in there. In my particular setup, the S11 Ultra does have more internal storage as well to play with, 512 instead of 256 gig, but that's not my doing, you know, I wouldn't pay extra for storage. Which brings me to a quick disclaimer here for you, for just for clarity. The Tab S11 Ultra is a review unit from Samsung, which I have to send back to them, whilst the iPad is my own iPad that I bought myself. Neither Samsung and obviously Apple <laughs> have a say on anything that I say here. These are incredible tablets, right? But are they really that different when it comes to what you can do with them? I think the big differences between these two has always been in the software and their approach, right? In how they handle multitasking, for example, or in some cases, how they didn't handle it. But with iPadOS 26 this year, I think Samsung has got a, a little bit of ground to, to cover now. Did Apple just really bridge that gap of multitasking that you know we've always had? More on that in just a moment, because I think we have to appreciate as well the marvelous displays on these tablets. Both of these are ridiculous to look at, in a good way. The M5 iPad Pro is still very much in portable reference monitor territory. The colors are incredible, they're clean. Text is razor sharp on both of them, to be fair. HDR content on them, just like, it jumps off the screen. Amazing displays. In fact, I wish both Apple and Samsung used the displays on their laptops as well, especially Apple. If we had this display of a MacBook Pro, for example, touch screen as well, yeah. Maybe we wouldn't need an iPad at that point, but anyway, I digress. When you are editing photos, like in Lightroom or something like that, or just reading or even just staring at a spreadsheet for too long, it feels incredibly crisp and very easy on the eyes, even when you're working late, you know, like I said, doing any boring work. The Tab S11 Ultra has a bit of an edge. I mean, I'll show you the, the screen to body ratio here in the screen so you can see it's slightly bigger, but it's like having a, a mini home cinema as well. I do prefer this aspect ratio for watching movies. This big AMOLED display with all these deep blacks as well and punchy colors is stunning for watching content and surprisingly good for work as well. Both are 120 hertz display, so great for gaming, watching content. Both feel super smooth to scroll around and flick through windows. And honestly, you would be happy with either if your main priority is a nice screen, but there is a small difference in how much of the front is actually displayed. The iPad already has really slim bezels, but the Tab S11 Ultra pushes things a bit further with an even higher screen to body ratio. So you get a touch more usable canvas here in roughly the same footprint, which is nice when you're running decks with lots of windows or watching for content full screen. Like I said, I've always preferred this wider aspect ratio, including in my videos like the time that you're watching right now. I just prefer that kind of, you know, it's more like cinematic from a content watching perspective. 
And speaking of glass and how these things feel to use, there is one more thing that makes a massive difference to how the iPad feels in day-to-day -day use, and that is accessories around it. Unfortunately, with Samsung, there aren't that many accessories in the third-party world, so you know you might have to find some cheaper accessories on Amazon. But Samsung are getting better at giving accessories themselves for the tab, which brings me on nicely to today's sponsor, ESR. If you've watched my videos before, you know that ESR, they are present in a lot of my videos about Apple stuff, and I've got three great iPad Pro accessories to share with you today. This one here, the detachable shift keyboard case, the ESR UltraFit Armorite screen protector, and the ESR Geo digital pencil. Whether you are considering an upgrade or sticking with your current iPad, honestly, these accessories will make a bigger difference to your daily use than jumping from the M1, M2, or M4 to the M5. You can quote me on that. The Shift keyboard case, this is one that's been glued to my iPad lately, and so many of you have already commented in previous videos asking, where is that case? What keyboard is that? Well, here it is. It's a detachable keyboard, so you can snap the iPad off and use it with the stand, or even better, keep typing wirelessly. This is gonna be really important when I show you how it works with Dex and window apps, but this is also perfect when you want the iPad on a stand or in your hands and the keyboard on your lap, for example, or on a desk across the table. Bluetooth stays solid up to 10 meters anyway, so you're not chained to it. The angles are great on the stand as well, from 20 degrees to 75 degrees in landscape, so you can be working and watching content, 70 degrees, for example, for portrait or reading, and a low 20% for drawing mode or just sketching with your fingers even, photo edits, that sort of thing. It's genuinely versatile and stable, not wobbly like some of the Flow stands out there. Honestly, I took this with me everywhere recently, on trains, airplanes, my trips, and it's not going anywhere, it's gonna come with me in my future trips as well. This edge-to-edge -edge trackpad is big and properly clickable as well, about 4.4 by 2.8 inches, and multi-touch gestures that work the way you expect, you know, as if it was an Apple device anyway, so navigation feels laptop-like, but more importantly, just like the Apple stuff. Battery life is measured in months, so you kind of charge once and forget for a few weeks, no problem. And you get 360 degree protection with reinforced corners, plus dual Apple Pencil holders built in here at the back, very convenient, it doesn't kind of fall out either. It's also lighter than a lot of the keyboard cases that I've tried. If you're on the latest Pros, you're covered, it's made for the 11 inch, 13 inch M4, and the 2025 iPad Pro models, like the one I'm using right now. And of course, the most important thing, it feels amazing to type on this. Now, the screen protector for the iPad Pro follows the great quality that we already kind of used to, if you use the ESR protector on the iPhone, is one of the best out there. Not just from a protective perspective, but how easy the install is. It's superb, probably the best in the industry. You drop the iPad into the ESR's UltraFit tray, pull the tab, that's it. No dust, no bubbles, two steps, no faffing with alignment or anything like that. Once it's on, Armorite is rated at seven times the impact absorption of any generic protectors that you find out there. So you're gonna keep the pristine look without babying the iPad. You know, if you drop it or you, you know, I don't know, if something falls on the screen, especially handy if your iPad gets family use, if your kids get hold of it, right? If you ever fought with alignment or trapped lint in, inside there and having to reapply the, the protector, sometimes wasting more money, the tray alone makes this whole thing worth it and you get a perfect glass finish. It's also great when it comes to selling your iPad down the line, right, as the display will be as new. Now, something that I actually saw this last year and I didn't get a chance to try is ESR's Geo Digital Pencil. It's a cost-effective alternative to the Apple Pencil Pro, but get this, it actually has an Apple certified Find My module built into the pencil. If you misplace it, just open Find My as you normally would, ping it with a sound and it's back in your hand. You also get Bluetooth shortcut buttons with a battery display as well, palm rejection, tilt sensitivity, and a 1.5 mil fine tip for precision. It fully charges in about 20 minutes via USB-C and gives you up to 12 hours of use. And it's compatible with iPads from 2018 onwards, so you don't need to, you know, kind of buy the latest model to use this. The price is $32.99, which, frankly, wild for something that, you know, that's got Find My baked in. I'll leave a link below for you, or scan the QR code here if you're watching from a TV. And thanks again, ESR, for sponsoring this video. On the Galaxy Tab S11 Ultra, as soon as you plug it in, you get a familiar pop-up asking if you want desk to pop up on the external display. You only see that once. The next time you plug in, it just launches Dex, no problem. Same for the iPad, you get the splash screen, you know, whether you want to mirror the display or just use Stage Manager. Again, tap once, wait a couple of seconds and boom, you're in full desktop layout. 
taskbar. The cool thing with Samsung is that the tablet itself can then be used as a trackpad. On the iPad Pro, you get a proper extended display as well, not just a mirrored iPad, and you can choose the resolution and scaling inside settings. The first time you do it, there's a tiny bit of a faffing with you know choosing the layout and making sure that the apps you use are usable in the right size and where you want it on the screen as well. The good thing about iPadOS 26 now, once you've used it there, the next time you open the app, it will remember that's where you like it. It's really cool. Day to day, this is what's important, right? With the Tab S11 Ultra, Dex really does feel like a mini laptop UI. It's, it's had years and years to mature. I do feel, like I said before, that it's time now for Samsung to step up a little bit from a UI perspective, but you get overlapping windows, keyboard shortcuts, right-click menus, and most Android apps behave like desktop apps, or at least close enough. With the iPad Pro, Stage Manager in iPadOS 26 finally <laughs> feels intentional. I've been praising Apple for this. It's not very like me to, to do this, but it's finally what we wanted, for, at least I wanted since iPadOS. 16 maybe. Windows snap into place nicely. The external display is not wasted with you know massive bezels or giant icons or Apple sometimes. You know, I remember when it first came out, Stage Manager tried to resize things that you've resized. At least it remembers everything that the way you like it, your layouts. You can have things tiled in a, in a particular way. As well as doing productivity stuff, there, there are times when you want to plug things in like a USB hub or SD card reader, an external SSD both handle those things just fine. Keyboard and mouse pairing, if you don't have the Magic Keyboard or if you don't get the ESR keyboard, there is an easy way to pair a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, as well as a gaming controller as well, exactly the same thing. Where they differ now is more in the polish. Dex still sort of wins from a, I don't know, functionality perspective because it doesn't just work on iPads. This is a huge point. It works on a lot of Samsung devices. Whereas the iPad stage manager now is more polished, the UI is more pleasing to use, it actually makes you want to use multitasking on, on a monitor and actually work and use it as a traditional desktop. I want to show you some practical use of these features. So not just quantifiable information like how many windows you can open on each, but how practical it is to work on them with and without connecting to a display as well. I'm opening the Microsoft Suite, which is something that not many people test here on YouTube, but it's something that a lot of people still use. So Excel, PowerPoint, Word, Outlook, Google Chrome with those 20 tabs open, Teams as well, because I know a lot of people run meetings uh, throughout the day, Slack for kind of simulate a, a team sort of conversation, and then a couple of extra apps as well that I think most of you will at least recognize. And as well as running those apps, uh, I know that some people like to listen to music in the background, so I'm having Spotify on both, running, listening to a podcast or whatever, just so you can, again, have a sense for the UI, because those things don't need to be front of the screen, but they need to be running, and I'll show you how they behave as well. Here's a quick scenario of you know a travel day. For example, you might want to have YouTube in a small window in the corner, email and notes open, and a messaging app as well in there to show how each system handles sort of picture in picture, background playback, while you work as well, maybe on a train or on an airplane or something like that. In a way, I'm glad Apple is doing this with the iPad now because hopefully this is sending Samsung a little bit of a kick saying, hey, <laughs> You gotta do some work now to, to get Dex where it belongs. And listen, that doesn't mean that Dex is suddenly bad or that Samsung should scrap it. If anything, it's the opposite. This is the first time Apple has really put the pressure on Samsung in this space of multitasking. Multitasking used to be the things that when Apple users, you know, forgive me if you're one of them, but it's true. I've heard this from so many Apple users before. They say, oh, no one does multitasking on, on Apple devices. It's clearly useful. It's clearly something that a lot of people are now saying, this is the next big thing. And I agree, it's always been you know, amazing. That's why DeX is a loved feature. And I'd love to see a, a new DeX where hopefully Samsung comes back swinging. For now though, if your main goal is turning a tablet into a little desktop for productivity, the iPad Pro with iPadOS 26 is finally in the conversation. So it's an option as well. So not just a, a pretty screen that you can watch Netflix on, it's actually been redefined for working. I don't know, I'm sounding like an Apple salesman here, but I'm not, it is fantastic. I'm, you know, I criticize Apple a lot for many things, but in this case, yeah, well done. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a like. There's a new thing on YouTube as well. And if you have a free one, I'd really appreciate. It's called Hype. So it's near the like and subscribe or whatever. It's silly. We've got to ask multiple things now. 
but it does help channels like mine to be discovered out there. And I put a lot of effort into these videos for you, and I hope you appreciate you know, all the work that goes into this. But there's a lot of love that goes into this as well. And hopefully what I'm asking is not too much. It's free. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Look, I always forget to say this, but thank you for all the support that you give this channel. It doesn't go unnoticed. I just try to make these videos kind of tight. So I'm putting this bit right at the end of the video because you know you don't have to watch this bit. I'm just saying I appreciate everything. All the opportunities that I'm getting through the channel is thanks to you. So I'm being sent to Indonesia for a, for a launch event. I'm going to CES in January for, for Las Vegas. These are opportunities that I wouldn't be able to do if it wasn't for your support, if it wasn't for you helping me uh, grow this channel. So thank you so much. Something like you've never seen I'm introducing a new thing